Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a 2023 Nissan Rogue SV Midnight Edition tour and I am super excited and check out our background. We are actually here at my family farm for 4th of July weekend. So I thought, let's see what this Rogue's really made up. Let's do a little off-roading. And with this all-wheel drive model, I am actually pretty impressed because we were able to get over quite a rocky hill. We went through a creek, through a field. I mean, nothing crazy, but you know what? The Rogue did a pretty good job. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I'm a mom of three and a certified child passenger safety tech. Please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then comment below which vehicle tours you want to see next. All right, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so the Nissan Rogue, let's break this down. She got redesigned in 2021, and I honestly think it was like one of the most iconic redesigns of recent history because I think Nissan kills it on their exteriors. This is such a good looking five passenger vehicle. And I'm very excited about the Midnight Edition, which is new for 2023 because it looks even fresher. We have some beautiful blacked out elements like this great looking blacked out grill. We have our Nissan logo, very big with some white Nissan lettering. But I wanna take a second to talk about this color. So this is called Boulder Gray. And I want you to tell me in the comments, if you think this like, what would you call it? It's like a matte gray color is here to stay if it's iconic or if it is going to be a flash in the pan in 20 years from now, it will become the old man gold that we all kind of poke fun at now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this here to stay or is it going to go? All right, let's take a look at her side profile. So I want to know in the comments what you guys think of the exterior. It is a fresh looking exterior. It truly looks like the mini Pathfinder. Um, and on this midnight edition, we have some great, like I said, blacked out elements. We have 18 inch blacked out um, wheels right there, black fenders, which I think look really good against the gray, and then some great black roofing. It's truly like a two-tone vehicle. I love this kind of squared off end right here. All right, and now let's take a look at the back end of the redesigned Rogue. Again, the blacked out lettering. I think it looks stunning. SV all-wheel drive midnight edition. Let's take a second to talk about how much this car costs. So the Rogue starts, I think, right under 30, about 29,000. The Rogue trim levels, let me tell you something, they go up in price. I think you can max out a platinum road like in the high 30s, which is a lot of money for this type of vehicle. So this is the SV trim level. It's got the midnight package and I believe one other package. This one's coming out to closer to like $36,000, which is still very expensive. I can't imagine needing any more than what's on this vehicle. So my recommended trim level for the Rogue would be the SV. If you want more features, consider adding a package. I don't recommend going up in trim level. Okay, let's take a look at the interior of this 23 Nissan Rogue Midnight. Check this out. Look at this like brown faux hard plastic leather looking thing against the black. I think a chocolate on black interior is kind of fresh. You don't see that a lot. And I think it actually gives it a nice look. A little bit of contrast stitching, some kind of interesting textured plastic right here, but overall a very simple interior. The leather of the Nissans are so soft, almost like too soft. Like I'm kind of worried that I'm going to scratch it. But let's get you in on the other side. And I want to start breaking down all of the technology and safety features this Rogue has to offer. Okay, I want to break down the trim level a little bit more because I do have the window sticker. So this is an SV. I have the Midnight Edition, which gives me all that like exterior design elements. And then I have the SV Premium. In the premium, I'm getting the heated steering wheel, heated seats, second row sunshades, power lift tailgate, power moonroof, roof, and roof rails. That's a $2,600 package that I think is worth it because I need a power tailgate. I like the upgraded seats, the heated seats, heated steering wheel. I mean, it sucks to spend that extra money, but I do think that package is worth it if comfort features are, is what you're after. Nissan, like most manufacturers, does a very good job of making sure that they put a lot of uh, crash prevention safety features standard on the vehicle. So you are going to get like the Nissan safety assistance on the vehicle, which comes with things like a blind spot camera, our frontal collision, our automatic emergency braking, all the things to help prevent crashes. Guess what? The Nissan Rogue, this kind of shocked me, is also an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. So it has the highest award from the IIHS, which is a huge win for the Nissan lineup. Okay, let's get to the tech. It's, per, it's it's okay. Um, here's the thing, Nissan. I don't know who needs to hear this. You've got to ditch the orange. I'm just, or just change it a little bit. Like they've done a better job of making this infotainment system more updated, a little bit more responsive. But at the end of the day, it's the same font. It's the same color as like a 2014. Like I bet if you have an older Nissan, you will see some similarities in this screen. Now you are getting Apple CarPlay, Android Auto standard on the Nissan Rogue, which is a really nice addition. We also have an available wireless charger, which this one does not have. 
USB and USB-C, heated seats, heated steering wheel, some great cup holders. And I love this underneath element, this like little bridge right here. Oh, I mean, I've got a baby bib, sorry about that. But it's a great place to have a little bit of extra storage right there. Um, inside our center console, it's tiny, but it's not horrible. I mean, it's kind of a tinier car, so you can't be that mad at it. Um, we also have the panoramic sunroof. Okay, now before we get to the second row in the car seat setup, I want to quickly talk about how this vehicle drives. And I don't mention this every car tour, but I feel like it's important to mention on this Nissan Rogue. So they redid the engine for 2021. It's now a 1.5 liter. It also has the CVT transmission, which I, again, I'm not a performance driver and not even, I don't even like how the CVT transmission drives. Basically, the vehicle shifts differently than a standard automatic transmission would. So what they're claiming is you're going to get good fuel economy in this car. They're saying 35 on the highway. I got closer to 31, 32 when I was doing my test. I also feel like the car has lacks a little bit of performance, lacks a little bit of zip. So that might not be a deal breaker to some people. So my recommendation is if you're looking at this vehicle, you've got to make sure you test drive it, like actually test drive it. Like just don't bop around the town or what's by the dealership. Get on the highway, try to merge and get this thing as close to zero to 60 as you possibly can and make sure you're happy with the performance. I would like to see a little bit more horsepower and a little bit more torque out of this Nissan Rogue because yes, it's fuel efficient. To me, it was totally lacking in performance though. All right, here's a shot of me in the second row of the Nissan Rogue. This seat set for myself, I'm super tall, about six feet. Great knee clearance. I mean, it's a decent sized five passenger car. They call it like the subcompact model. Okay, let's take a look at the door panel because this is super exciting. Rear sunshades. You know, you don't see these a lot in five passenger vehicles. So that was a very exciting addition. And I think definitely would be worth getting if you're going to have kids back here because the built-in sunshades really are the best. I've never found an aftermarket one that, can, that nearly covers the right part of the window stays on, is safe. I think the built-in ones are the way to go. We have a really nice side cubby right here, which is perfect for like a giant Stanley water bottle or anything like that. Um, only a leather back pocket on this side, which I'll never understand. There's like so many vehicles that randomly only put it on one side and that makes no sense to me. And then we are also gonna have our own vents back here, a USB and a USB-C also. Okay, let me break down the car seat setup for you because it's a little more interesting than your typical. This Nissan Rogue has five lower anchors. And you're probably thinking, don't you need two lower anchors per car seat? And the answer would be yes. But in the Nissan Rogue, they put an extra lower anchor in the middle seat. The only time you would ever really use that is if you wanted to install a car seat in the middle with the lower anchors. So it works for some situations. It doesn't work for everybody. I always say I like lower anchors in sets of two. A random fifth one doesn't really do much for you. You're going to have three tether anchors across the back. And I have brought a Kleck Lang car seat that I have installed with the lower anchors behind the passenger. I have this seat set for myself also, and I have some really nice clearance. I mean, if you compare this to something like the Mazda CX-5, holy smokes, you have so much more room in this Nissan Rogue. Let's look at this lower anchor situation a little closer. So here's this random fifth one. So what they're saying is you could put a car seat here with the lower anchors. However, as you can see, when you do this, it covers up this buckle. So it would make this seat completely inoperable. So that's why I'm saying like, it doesn't really do much unless you like only had a baby and you felt safer putting the baby in the middle seat with the lower anchors and you wanted to put it here. Honestly, like I, I would probably never use it. I would just tell you to put the car on the outboard seat so you don't lose that additional seat. I know I'm going to get asked about three across. I'm going to say, I, I'm going to say no. I think there's maybe like one or two options that could work with the right combination and the right kids. But overall, this is not a car in my opinion that's designed to do a lot of three across combos. I think it's going to be very tough. This middle seat's kind of tight. These buckles just aren't that flexible and don't really have that much wiggle room. It's going to be tough. And we kind of have like some weird, like some bolsters here that can make it a little difficult to get something to like squish into place. So I like it for two kids. I really do actually, or one kid or no kids. This vehicle is good tech, good exterior for, you know, depending on the trim level, not a ton of money. But let's check out the trunk space. <laughs> okay. So in the trunk, I have a Mockingbird double stroller. And it fits. I mean, it's a nice size trunk. You can lay these seats completely flat too. Like if I could lay down this uh, 60 side of the 60 40 split. And then I have some really great trunk space. Uh, nothing's power, but you just can obviously reach in there and grab the lever. Only other thing I don't like is there's no like tabby or anything, like no long string or anything to go back there and pull it back up. So I am going to knock it on that. But for the most part, for the size of the car, it's a nice, impressive size trunk. All right, y'all, so that's going to wrap up my tour of this 2023 Nissan Rogue SV Midnight Edition. 
Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this five passenger car. I'm so curious to hear, especially what you think of this paint color. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.